you can easily manage those. You can deploy them very quickly. You only have one place to manage up to 128 access points. So it's a, a very good solution that we uh, have had out for a few years now. Um, it's fairly cost effective because you don't need licensing or that controller or subscription. Uh, it simply is just the access point and the management uh, within those access points. We have quite a few capabilities out of the box. So it's not just um, uh, a dumb system. It actually is fairly intelligent. You have a lot of uh, firewall capabilities. You have stateful firewall inspection. You have role-based access configurations that you can do. And then we have application visibility. So built into the instant platform, we have something called a, a deep packet inspection engine that actually has roughly a, a couple thousand applications that we're aware of the signatures of, meaning if I want to block um, BitTorrent, I don't have to just go in and say, I want to block these ports. I could block this traffic as a type. Uh, which is incredibly useful. You can also throttle this application. So uh, application throttling, bandwidth throttling is all available to you as a default feature within the instant management interface. There's a couple other features we have, uh, adaptive radio management and client match. I'll get over, uh, chat with you guys about that as well. If you want to go to the next slide there. Or uh, if you, yeah, thank you. Um, so this is actually how you would configure it um, out of the box. So let's say you get a shipment out of the box, you get a few um, instant access points. This is actually how it's configured. You pull the first one out of the box, the first one that boots up first becomes the virtual controller. In the boot process, they look for a virtual controller. And if they don't find one, they just elect themselves and become the virtual controller. Subsequent access points that you boot up in the boot process, they look for that virtual controller. If they find it, they actually marry themselves to that and they join the cluster. So uh, what's really cool is that the virtual controller actually um, acts as kind of that master access point. Um, it actually doesn't, uh, even though it's listed here, it actually doesn't perform full controller and firewall functions on its own. It actually simply has the database of information and it actually uh, manages kind of that management traffic. Um, so it, each independent access point will uh, manage its own firewall policies and enforce those. However, you configure them from the virtual controller. Um, so it's incredibly simple and easy to configure. And down below there, you'll see it says network survivability. What's really cool about instant is, let's say we um, launch up 50 access points if your virtual controller got disconnected or uh, was down for whatever reason, the next one that has to uptime elects itself as the virtual controller by default. So you can have 50 APs go down to a single AP and still have a virtual controller. Any one of the APs can act as that master access point. Uh, go to the next slide, please. Let me chat with you about um, a specific feature, uh, a sub-feature of adaptive rate of management arm. And that is client match. This is an Aruba kind of only feature. And what this does, um, it resolves that sticky client problem. Um, you, you may have experienced it where you, you have a client that really should go to another access point, but it's stuck on one um, that may be initially connected to. So let's say, for instance, I go to um, our partner's office for the day and I, I work out of there. Let's say I have my mobile device in my pocket. And as soon as I walked in the door, maybe it connected to the access point near their front desk. And as I walk along the office, maybe they put me in the warehouse to work for the rest of the day in a little, you know, um, cold cubicle or something. Well, my access point, my, sorry, my client device, my mobile phone, it sometimes it can be kind of dumb. And it might still be connected to that access point I was initially connecting to when I first walked in. But the reality is, is it's better suited for the one that's right above me. And um, I have a problem called sticky client problem. So how the Aruba client match works is it will detect all the clients to see um, where they're located at. Is there a better AP they're better suited for? And what we'll do is it'll make the access point I'm connected to look less attractive and make the access point I ought to be connected to look more attractive. So what's really cool is it will um, enhance your end user experience by forcing clients to go to a better suited access point which is really cool. Also, uh, inherently, if you're on a real-time VoIP call, it doesn't force you to move to another access point. 
if you're connected and your client doesn't move, it doesn't force you to move because that would be a disconnection from your VoIP phone call. So it automatically detects real-time traffic, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, next slide there, Matt. So um, I always like to kind of talk about why Aruba, and I think um, it's important to note a lot of the differenti differentiators that Aruba offers. Uh, client match is one of those features. Um, it's part of our DPAC inspection, sorry, it's part of our ARM functionality. Um, we also have a lot of network security features um, just out of the box, even with our instant platform. We have uh, intrusion detection and prevention out of the box with instant, and you can also get with controller. Uh, and that's what the IDS IDP is, detection and prevention services. We also have application um, RF, which shows you the applications users are using, and you actually have the capability of doing something about it. You don't just see, hey, look, looks like they're using BitTorrent again. It's, it's, it's more about you being able to do role-based access and deny access or enhance access or limit access to certain kinds of applications. And then we have uh, what's listed there's enterprise access control list. So if you look at a lot of uh, management interfaces from our competitors, you're going to notice there's quite a bit of a lack of uh, not only the number of applications, but how you can implement an access list, a policy list of what resource restrictions or enhancements you can have. Uh, we have quite a few capabilities even in our instant management interface. And then kind of that last one that I kind of noted there, the client match is actually a sub-feature of adaptive radio management. What that means for you is ease of configuration and end-user quality experience. What I mean by that is, is adaptive radio management will automatically detect all the access points and turn up and down the power levels of all the APs in its own network, as well as it will automatically adjust the channels they're on. Because if everyone's on the same channel, it's going to cause interference, and it's going to be a bad end-user experience. So adaptive radio management ensures that everyone has a great experience by adjusting power levels of the APs and adjusting the channels accordingly, and also ensuring things like client match are enabled to ensure um, APs are associated with the right clients. Uh, go ahead, and uh, if you want to go to the next slide there. So um, as I mentioned uh, briefly earlier, there's multiple platforms that Aruba has. Um, Instant is just one of uh, a few of them. So Instant is that standalone where you have a uh, controllerless environment where you have an AP acting as a master, uh, if you will, and you have subsequent APs as kind of children in that environment. Any one of those could become the master at any moment if needed. Uh, that's our, our Instant management. We have Aruba Central. This is our cloud subscription model. Uh, because the inherent nature of Instant is, is that this is local to a particular site. It's local to a particular, um, I guess we call it a subnet. So it, it, since it's local and small, um, if you wanted to manage multiple locations in a single pane of glass, Aruba Central is potentially something you'd want to get. Because Aruba Central allowed you to have multiple locations managed in one, uh, one site. And that is all uh, subscription-based. So that's our cloud offering. And then Aruba West. That is our traditional classic model. Um, Matt showed you that list of all those Fortune 500 companies and uh, other organizations. Most of those are going to use Aruba West. The reason people go with um, the controller-based solutions is because it scales, has a lot of uh, really nitty-gritty features. And so you can have your AP span multiple networks. You can even have what are called remote access points that are maybe in your home and do a teleworker solution using this, as well as just on-site campus access points. Uh, with Instant, as I mentioned earlier, you can grow that up to 128 access points per, uh, per cluster. With Aruba West, you can have thousands of access points across hundreds of locations. So the largest companies in the world use the controller-based uh, one. And then we have at the bottom something called Airway. Now this is a kind of a... Um, you know, do you want fries with that kind of thing? You, know, you have your hamburger or you have your taco. Do you want fries with that? That's kind of what Airwave is. It's your uh, add-on that allows you to manage your um, Aruba configurations very, very nicely. So Airwave is something that a lot of large and medium corporations use, as well as maybe um, sites with multiple uh, organizations with multiple sites and locations. That allows us to manage instant, allows us to manage controller-based, and allows us to even manage third party. So um, if you have a Cisco environment today, you can actually manage your Cisco gear inside of Airwave. Airwave is a network uh, management system that allows you to manage your 
network hardware and your wireless in a single pane of glass. Uh, I love Airwave a lot. It's a very powerful tool. So just to kind of reiterate, we have three architectures, really. really. We have our instant, if you want to go back, just want to reiterate. Instant, our controllerless one, very affordable, single site. Aruba Central takes that instant if you have multiple locations and manages it in a single pane of glass. That's the subscription model. And then Aruba OS, our controller-based, which is incredibly scalable, lots of features, a bit more complex. Um, so that's our three predominant architectures. And then below we have Airwave, which is our management tool, uh, one ring to rule the wall, if you will, one management interface to rule your controller, instant, and third-party systems. Uh, next slide. And then let's take a look kind of at our portfolio of our, our hardware. I'll kind of describe um, where these generally fit. So starting at the top left, we have our outdoor access points, our 270 series. Um, these are really geared towards obviously being used in outdoor or maybe extreme environments. So it could be for maybe freezers indoors or something like that if you have that kind of environment where they can withstand, withstand I believe it's up down to negative 40 Fahrenheit. So it can withstand uh, extreme temperatures. And they actually include limited lifetime warranties, which is unheard of for outdoor access points. It's not typical in the industry at all. Uh, in these, they can each handle, if you wanted to handle clients, roughly 100 to 125 clients each. Um, the reality is, is these APs can handle more. However, that's kind of our logical limit of how many we would suggest you would support. In the middle there, um, at the top, we have our H models. That's our hospitality units. I really like these a lot because you can mount these um, horizontally. You can mount them on a desk or on a wall, like on a faceplate. And uh, these also have additional ports so you can plug in other devices, like a laptop or a VoIP phone. Um, going over on the uh, top right, we have our new Wave 2 AC platform. And that is our 320 series. Um, everything else you'll see here, with the exception of just a couple of these models, is AC technology. And AC is kind of the latest uh, uh, iteration of Wi-Fi. It allows for up to 1.3 gigabit per second throughput. It um, is a very nice technology that we've had out for about two years, year and a half or so now. Wave 2 is the next version of AC, and that allows for more capacity, more throughput. And uh, one feature called uh, multi-user MIMO. What that allows you to do is have the uh, access point radio talk to multiple clients at the same exact time, whereas in before, up to this point, you actually had to share the, the radio with multiple uh, clients, and they were talking kind of one at a time, really fast, but one at a time. So the multi-user MIMO comes in uh, um, to handle higher density users more than anything else. And then down below, we have our uh, indoor access points, our 220, 210, and 200 series. You'll notice a trend here we have kind of the O series, so 270, 220, 210. We actually have two sub-models for each of those. So the 220 have is a 224, 225, 210 has 215, 214, 204, and 205 for the 200 series. The difference between the 204 and 205 is that the, uh, the 5 model has a built-in omnidirectional antenna, whereas in the 4 it has an um, antenna that is uh, external. So you can plug in external antennas to it for maybe point-to-point -point connectivity or covering a certain area. Um, you'll kind of see there we have small, medium, and large there. So the smaller one can handle uh, roughly 20 to 35, sorry, 25 to 30 users. The 210 series is more geared towards 60 to 75, and the 220 series is more geared towards roughly around 100 users. So um, that's kind of the purpose behind each of those is just a higher density. And with each of those, you get a higher number of users because of the memory and processing capabilities that we've put in each of those. In the middle there, we have something called remote access points. <clears throat> As I mentioned earlier, um, a controller can handle access points inside of the organization as well as even in folks' homes or remote. And so we've actually geared some of them to be inside someone's house. Um, you'll see a list of them. Uh, the 205H there is... If you get a stand, essentially it can act as that as well. Um, so I actually probably, over all these, I recommend the 205H. I have one of those myself. I love it. I can just put it on my, my desk, and it provides great Wi-Fi signal. Because the other access points you'll see here that uh, next to it, the 220, 210, and 205 series, 200 series, 
those are geared to be mounted on a ceiling. So if you put them on a wall, they're not going to propagate RF nearly as well. So in the middle there, the 205H is what I would use for putting on a desk. Uh, last but not least on our portfolio, we have controllers. We have two different series. We have our 7000 series and our 7200 series. The, the, the primary difference is capabilities of how many access points they can uh, support. So with our 7000 series, we have a model that starts at 1680p's, goes to 64. And the 1680p model is that one kind of on the top of that, uh, those other ones, there's that white one that looks like an access point. I actually have one of those myself. It's very small, very low powered, but it's great for that small branch or small location. Up above there's our 7200 series. Uh, generally, people stack these to get all, you know, a lot of density of users. So in stadiums like here, the Portland area, we have the motor center where the trailblazers play, and you're going to see several 7200 series access points um, connected together, uh, which is quite nice. Uh, next slide, please. So I can take over from here, Rob. Yeah, um, so with the, what we've been talking about, um, and with the uh, Aruba solutions they allow you to do is to, to reimagine your typical workplace. So uh, more open, collaborative, uh, not so much tied to a standard cubicle farm. Um, and these uh, changes to workplace have real-world applications and actually monetary savings uh, that can be accomplished. We have a couple uh, anecdotes from some of our customers to sort of explain that further. Um, so the first one uh, would be the right size mobile first connectivity to reduce your network costs of 75% by going wireless and cutting the cords. Uh, save money by running less cabling, towering, and purchasing less switch ports. So Cardinal Health, in this case, they saved 75% cost on their network by going all wireless. Um, that, going all wireless, enables more free seating. 60% um, of cubicles now go unoccupied. Um, people can't sit in a place where they prefer, either in a collaborative desk like, or a seating area like those couches pictured, um, or in a specific conference room that you need to go and have more private time. Um, but 14K per position on average um, from allowing uh, your employees to sort of utilize the full office space available to them. Uh, and powered by untethered unified communications, um, American Fidelity saved over 700K uh, by eliminating the cabling um, and using uh, unified communications either through Skype or business, um, you know, any other ways to, to communicate uh, through link, uh, what have you. So a lot of potential savings. These are obviously large enterprise customers, so those uh, high values of savings um, are, are reflected in that, but uh, even for small to medium customers, uh, there are savings to be had uh, by, by uh, initializing that uh, upfront, upfront cost to uh, upgrade your network. In the long run, uh, there's going to be uh, significant uh, savings through a, a variety of avenues within your business um, that can be realized there. So with that, that pretty much covers everything. Um, Robert and I are available if there are any questions um, on either piece or you know, working towards digitalizing your workplace. Um, so thank you guys for, for jumping on um, and uh, you know, happy to hear any questions that there may be. Hi, uh, Matt. If there are no questions, that would be it. Hi, Matt. Rob, can you hear me? This is James. Yes, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, great. Um, just a, a couple of quick questions that I had here. You were mentioning that uh, you know the virtual controller, when you set up a new access point, those new access points automatically uh, recognize the virtual controller. What if I want to uh, open up two clusters within the same workspace? How is that handled? Yeah, you could actually create two clusters. However, one of the only dilemmas is they, they wouldn't necessarily work well together. Um, they might fight one another. So it's not generally recommended. However, you can do that. 
um, what you do is you configure them completely independently of one another or create separate networks for them to join. And so if they're on separate subnets, then the reality is, is that you're not going to, um, uh, they're not even going to see each other anyway. The only way they form a cluster is if they're on the same network, the same net LAN. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Thanks. And uh, just one more question that I had for you then is you mentioned in role-based access that you can limit uh, you can limit the access and role-based access. Um, and you mentioned, right. you know, you can limit by application and there, there's thousands of applications you can limit. Can you limit by device? So if somebody is using an iPhone versus a, a laptop, can, you know, can, can that have a different set of rules? So you can do it per user or per user type or per role, but uh, in in, in just with kind of the basics of a controller and, and instant, you can't say iPhones have this. Um, you might be able to finagle something with Mac addresses, saying if this is an Apple device, give them this role, something like that, potentially. However, if you want to do that kind of setup, you might need an application called ClearPass, which would give you the application um, uh, information that allows you to do uh, a bit more um, network access control based on the client device type. Got it. Okay, well that's that's it for my questions. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Rob. No problem. All right. If uh, there are no other questions, I think uh, that's it for us. So uh, go ahead and end the meeting. And then James, if anything comes up, um, feel free to reach out to myself and. And we'll be able to, to answer any more questions that may come later. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, guys. All right.